Awesome. Well, here we are, another episode of the Ice Team Podcast. I'll tell you what, when we launched this, or even had the idea about this Ice Team Podcast, there was a group that came to mind right away. You know, I thought about who are we going to have on this, and right away I'm thinking i got to have the Crappie Chronicles, right? Not only do I know you guys on a personal level, better I respect the heck out of what you guys do. And, and to be honest, here we're filming at Clam Outdoors well after hours, and your dedication's awesome. I appreciate it so much. And uh, I think there's so much we can all learn from these gentlemen, not just on how to catch a crappie. It's going to be digging deep into some of the stories behind each of you, uh, who you were as kids. Um, we may not dig too deep into Bartusik's vault because we may be scared of what we find. Scarred. My, my mom and dad would tell you not to do that. <laughs> Scarred. But uh, hopefully we can go into this and have some fun, tell some stories. Uh, there's a, a rumor that Ryan might be cooking something for us today. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole reason I brought him along, you know. So, <laughs> That's right, sir. you know, we got the Crappie Chronicles here. I'll introduce each of them. Uh, I probably don't need an introduction, but I got Adam Bartusik here next to me. Uh, he's kind of the brainchild behind some of this stuff, um, not to in, inflate his ego, but uh, it's the truth. Matt Waldron, you guys know Matt. Uh, Adam Griffith and Ryan Pinkala. So these four fine gentlemen chase crappies all over the ice belt and are known for doing that. So welcome aboard, guys. Yeah, Good nice to, to be, be here. here. Yeah, thanks. I know you came. Some of you came right from work. So, like I said, it's a labor of love. We're going to get out here and talk some some fishing and, and tell some stories here. So, how I've started a lot of these, uh, to be honest, is is the topic of fishing, of course, is Todd in hand, right? Everyone wants to learn about fishing. But I think what's even more important is figuring out what makes you guys tick. Uh, I didn't meet you guys until you were, let's call it, professional ice anglers right of some some caliber uh, caliber and uh but i want to know how you got started in fishing i think that's been a good story that we've leaned on with some of our guests and call it selfish but i've learned some snippets you know i learned how gens started fishing he would walk mm-hmm. into a creek in his backyard and catch carp and sell them for two cents a pound didn't know that i wish i knew that was a possibility when i was a kid you know, we did that. So I think it'd be fun to spitball back and forth. The four of you talk with each other all the time. So I hope this isn't redundant. And hopefully you guys are going to share something that maybe each of you didn't know about each other either. So, you know, I'd like to start the dialogue today with just a little history on the four of you uh, before you were Bart, Waldo, Griff, and Pink. What made it tick in the sport of fishing for you guys? And how did it come to forefront and made you start this passion? Yeah, for sure. I think so for me, I mean, um, I guess what makes me tick is a little different than what got me started fishing. But what got me started fishing, I would say, is uh, my uncle, like none of my family really fishes, um, but my uncle had a cabin up by Park Rapids and we would just go up there for our family all the time. And um, my mom and dad still say to this day, the only way they could ever get me to shut up was to put me on a paddle boat and send me out all day. So I'd go out and I'd fish, I'd come back. And that's, that's how I enjoyed my day. That's really how I got into it. My grandpa fished a little bit, but for the most part, uh, it was just, it, that was just my thing. When we were at the cabin, I loved to fish. I didn't get to do it when I was growing up on a pig farm or playing basketball. So, um, yeah, that's really how to, how I got into it. But what makes me tick in terms of the ice industry and doing this whole thing and kind of what we all do is um, I, I'm just ultra competitive and I just don't really have an off switch, I don't think, when it comes to work or, you know, wanting to be the best at something. And I think that can be to a fault as well. But I think these guys would also say, like, I, I always push everything to the limit all the time. Never, never don't. So that's really what makes me tick. But yeah, it's a little different in terms of how I got started fishing. I just did it because my mom and dad didn't want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> yeah, smart so parents. do you guys bring a paddle boat with you? When, when I will you go now. Fishing? We're going to start. You, you found well, we'll definitely to... leave him by himself a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so a, a, a pig farm, you grew up on a pig farm. Did your family, uh, I mean, do I have to thank you for the bacon I eat nowadays or what? Uh, I mean, you could, my, my grandpa's actually the Midwest farming hall of fame. So he did a, he did a lot of, uh, I don't, and I don't know the exact details of this, so don't quote me, but I know he did a lot of the development for the way pork was raised in the last like 20 to 40, 50 years. He kind of paved the way in that industry. And then my dad helped uh, lead a lot of the pork producers around the state and in the Midwest. So actually, yeah, they, they had a lot of, lot to do with the pork industry. So. But I did not enjoy farming, believe it. If you guys have seen me do manual labor, I'm very bad at it. I picture like Pauly Shore from What's That Movie when he's got to go back on the farm and learn to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, 
You, you know the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Griff, you're the only one here old enough. Yeah, I'll say, we're going to age her. Griff and I are going to age her. You guys are going to know who Polly Shore is, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. I have no clue. Okay. Clue. Griff knows what I'm talking about. Is that a male about. or a female? It's a male. He, he's, <laughs> he's a famous actor, and he went back someplace and had to like marry some gal on a farm and had to act from city to farm life, and it, it was actually pretty comical. Okay, I digress. But that's awesome. So you got uh, the pig farmer, Adam. I'm going to remember that. Uh, I know what to put on your jersey now. We make new ones, pig farmer. Yeah, but, that's, uh, I, I was a bad pig bad riding pig. a paddle paddle boat. <laughs> yeah, bad pig farmer. Yeah, yeah. put that. You wear a little curly tail around. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. He was just telling me a story about his job was mowing the lawn, and he would purposely <laughs> crash the lawn mower just to get an hour break so he didn't have to mow the lawn. Yeah, Pur- purposely, and yeah. you can't see me if you're listening, but I just did air quotes on purposely crash. crash no, like I, I told my grandma and my dad this like a few years ago when we were all talking about the farm got sold. I was because they they would always make fun of me because they're like, you would get it stuck every week, ha ha ha. And I'm like, you guys, I'm not that dumb. Like I just get <laughs> sick of mowing after the seventh hour, and I'm like, I get a little too close to the pond, get stuck, and I'd be like, oh darn, and I'd have to wait for dad to pull it out so I'd get a break. It's like they say, don't be really good at washing dishes because they'll ask you to do it every time. If you're really bad at it, then mom won't ask you to do dishes next time. Learn that with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Anna better not be listening. Nope. <laughs> Haven't done dishes uh, in a month. Well, that's awesome. Walda, how about you, man? Yeah, I, uh, my grandpa and my dad kind of got me into fishing when I was a kid. Um, my dad would uh, take me out in the canoe all the time, and uh, I did that. I mean, you can ask Bart. I was in a canoe until, like, high school pretty much, but um, I just got obsessed with it. You know, I just – it started from that to me riding my bike to, like, every day during the summer, skipping hockey camp to go, and uh, – fish and absolutely loved it so much i uh when i turned 17 i went and got a job at gander mountain and uh that's where i met Corey studer Corey would come by whenever we would have our ice fishing sales and whatnot and um from that he uh pretty much just asked if i wanted a any extra summer summer work pretty much so i went and i uh, got a job at vex and i've been there ever since so i've been there like nine years now mm-hmm. and uh it's short, simple, sweet, but that's kind of how I got started in it. And uh, what makes me tick, I just, I love catching fish. I love the challenge of it. Um, I love how I've always treated it as a competition between me and the fish and, you know, how many, how fast, how big. It doesn't really matter. I just, I, I love catching fish. And it uh, it's simple, but it's it's just an obsession, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I tell you, like, you mentioned Vex, right? You're working at Vexlar. I think most of the industry leans on you for Vexlar information. And you and I were just joking before we did this. And I just kind of said, uh, I made a comment. I'm like, what do you not do at Vexlar anymore? Um, Because I'll tell you what, I know a lot of our team here at Clam. Obviously, we all know Corey very well, right? Yeah. But Corey's a busy dude. um, And we lean on you quite a bit for Vexlar information. I know the industry does too. I mean, um, you're so into the the nuances and details of how Vexlars work. Yeah. Um, I know when you come to like an ice team university event, your time gets occupied by some of the participants quite often yeah. to show them exactly how everything performs. So um, we appreciate that for sure. So, yeah. you know, you've kind of molded yourself not into just one heck of an angler, but a good ambassador for a really good brand in the sport of fishing yeah. uh, that we all know and love called Vexlar. So, uh, thank you for that. And, dude, you're being modest, man. You can catch fish with the best of them. Like, <laughs> I've seen you whoop on a lot of people. So uh, your ability to fish and how you've come into your own there is something to be told. And it's not just ice. You've won some bass tournaments in the summertime. You've done yeah. a number of different things. You're a very avid uh, bow hunter and, and, and hunter in general. You know, you chase storms. Yeah. We'll get into that, yeah. too, at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I love chasing so, uh, storms. You know, appreciate everything you've done for sure, and it's – uh. It's good to hear the the canoe side of it and how that kind of kept you going at a young age. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I do remember a gander. Now that I now that you mention it, that uh, your your initial claim to fame in fishing was working at Gander Mountain. Yeah. Uh, um, back when they had a lot of fishing stuff. Oh yeah, that was like that was like the OG Gander mm-hmm. days. Back when we were the number one fishing sales department in all of Gander, the Eden Prairie store, mm-hmm. and. It was crazy. I mean, we had the biggest fishing section, and 
our only competition was Forest Lake during ice fishing. Besides that, we'd just mop yep. everybody. I remember that. We had quite the crew working over there, and it was fun. We had me, Chad Smith, yeah. uh, Andrew Osowski, Brian Bankston, Andy Hutter. Ooh. Uh, oh, first name's Kyle. Works for FLW. We used to Kyle work. Wood. Kyle Wood. Kyle Wood. Um, yeah, we had quite the crew going and it was a it was a ton of fun that's a a squad right there that's how i learned and then with that you know fighter being close friends with banks and would always and kyle wood would always come around and so that's kind of the crew that really when i was in high school taught me you know the nuances of bass fishing so i learned a lot very quickly from all of them and uh it was yeah i couldn't have asked for a, a better group of coaches really to help introduce me not only to you know, tournament fishing, technique specific stuff, but also the industry side of the of the game, really. So that was it was quite the learning experience. So those are okay mentors. <laughs> yeah, it I, was, say, I say that jokingly, of course. <laughs> like, you know, wow. Yeah. You know, it no, was, wonder, no wonder you fell in love with bass fishing. Yeah. Like that's a squad. It was caught bass. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would go out after work with Kyle and all the guys and Brian and we'd go to like Medicine Lake or, you know, all the little lakes in the Chan and Union Prairie area and it was really fun because not only was the fishing good, but I had amazing coaches that, you know, were ten to fifteen years older than me and had been there and done that and, you know, won pretty big tournaments and stuff and not only that, but they, they knew other guys in the industry that they had learned from. So it was really cool. It was a it was a learning experience. I, I mean, I couldn't have paid for it. It was yeah. amazing. That's epic, outstanding. Griff, Matt, Matt, do you would like this though, quick? But um, you talk about him and his canoe days. One of my absolute <laughs> best um, memories of Matt Waldron was actually he had a John boat back in the day. It was a fourteen oh, yeah. foot John boat. I upgraded. And, I upgraded. Um, yeah, so he had. I I, did, I don't remember all the details of it. I just remember. I think it was me and Bo Brower. Yeah, it was yeah. you and Bo Brower. Me and Bo were out fishing a, I think we were fishing a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night or whatever it was. We were, were pre-fishing. Or pre-fishing for it, like back when we were in high school. And um, we were out just in my lund or Bo's lund or whatever it was. And we're just going down this bank and Waldo runs by and he sees us. So we wave and he comes, whips a Yui, comes back over to us and he's just chatting with us. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go head out. And we're like, all right, see you, dude. And, you know, your conversation ends and you kind of turn. And I see Waldo reach for the strap of his trolling motor and pull. And that's back when, like, that Fortrex cable or whatever it was was really bad. <laughs> and it snapped. And it was the longest, slowest five-second stumble I have ever seen that ended in him bear-hugging his 40, like, 40-horsepower 40 motor, just praying to God not to fall in the lake with the rope still in his hand. Oh, yeah. It was and the trolling great. motor still down. Yeah, that was, I put a 36 volt trolling motor on that 14 foot boat. I, bl- I and, believe it. And it, I mean, I, I wouldn't even need to start that motor. I'd go seven miles per hour in that thing. And, oh, dude, it was no joke. Well, the motor was a little too big. And normally, when you lift up on a trolling motor, the boat's not supposed to flex. Well, the boat flexes, so you have to pull on it extra hard to get it out of a bracket. I just pulled a little too hard. Uh, oh, so yeah. funny. It sounded like a gunshot when the thing snapped. Oh, yeah. But a- anyways, anyways, sorry. We need to learn about Griff, Father Griff. The adult. <laughs> yes, the as, adult. As we say, when we, when we almost fell through the ice last year because Waldo wanted to go out. Yeah. As Pink said, I'm glad we brought an adult. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, well, I kind of grew up fishing. My parents were separated, so, like, I spent half my time in Wilmer and then half time in the city. So, like, when I was out there, I grew up basically fishing anything like we caught tons of bullheads carp any rough fish sometimes we'd get a walleye the lake we lived by didn't really have a lot of game fish in it so I rarely ever caught bass when I would come up here with my dad all we focused on was bass because he was a big tournament angler fished the Denny's um, the Silverado series all those um, back in the day and so I kind of had both perspectives of fishing just whatever And then I eventually moved up here, um, and it basically became just pre-fishing with my dad, like all the time, fishing tournaments. And after a while, I got tired of catching bass, and I actually stopped fishing bass for two years. I didn't target them once, and I started catching. I wanted to learn how to catch everything. And I went out, and I did flatheads and sturgeon. And, I mean, I caught 
anything that had gills in Minnesota, I went after it. And then uh, I kind of got back into bass fishing a little bit. Um, really, I wasn't really a big pan fisherman. Like, my dad just never did it, and so we just didn't do it. So, like, I didn't have the opportunity. But when we would, it would be a blast. I'm like, I love crappies. You know, it's so fun. Um, then I just kind of was like, I got back into the bass game, and I wanted to learn more about panfish, so I ended up joining, like, the Minnesota Panfish League, the UPL, stuff like that, just so I could learn from these guys that are the best, you know, out there. And I had some really good mentors kind of help me along with that, and I, I learned that very pretty fast because I had, you know, they kind of fast-track you when they're that, they're that good, and, you know, they show you the right way. And then... Uh, I was back into the bass game and I wanted to do tournaments. I just really never had a partner. My dad kind of lost interest in it. And I finally met uh, a guy named Jared LaFrance actually mm -hmm. on a tournament down south. And I said, you want to jump in the Denny's? I want to see if we can compete against these guys. Like I grew up fishing Tonka, so I knew the lake and went out there and uh, we had pretty good success, you know, and, and uh, then me and Jared kind of quit fishing. And then I got Clayton Storing, who's my current partner. And, uh, we did really well. And it was more of just to see if I could compete against these guys. Like, I have no drive to be in the Elite Series bass angler. Like, I just don't. Like, I just love fishing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care what it is, what it's for. And that's just kind of where I'm at. Like, I just, as I get older, I don't really care. Like, it's just more for fun. And mm -hmm. I just like teaching people now. You know, it started where I was learning. I had people teach me. And now it's kind of I'm at the point where now I'm, like, giving it back. Yeah. Like paying it forward to what, you know. What I was taught. I think that's one of the coolest things to hear because I, I think back to like when I first met Griff was, I don't know, five to eight years ago, whatever it was, first work in ice shows for Vexlar and everything. And I mean, Griff has, Griff has basically taught me how to ice fish along with like Waldo and then um, our buddy Brent or Lopez, like that's who I ice fished with. They had taught me everything, but Griff was for the longest time the most tight-lipped person you probably have ever met. You never knew anything, anything that was going on. He was the one most likely to just straight-up lie to you, and he was really good at it. <laughs> and uh, But, like, through the process of starting to film now and everything and doing a lot of these clinics and all that, it's been cool to see, you know, a lot of people think the cameras are bad um, or, you know, it can be a lot of negativity towards filming and filming big fish and to see Griff kind of take it in a completely different light and turn it into, you know, where he is now where he just likes to teach people. And mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. And if you go out fishing with him, you will learn a ton. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I'll, I'll I'm going to toot Griff's horn for a bit and this is no disrespect to all of our pro staff. We have, I get to work with a lot of pros, right? All over the ice belt. And I brag about Griff often and I, and I say two things. Adam's heard me say one of these. The first thing is the most underrated bass fisherman in our state of Minnesota is Adam Griffith. Yep. I'm a firm believer that. in that. Mm -hmm. I think because you don't want to be the elite guy and you don't want to jump in the limelight, you maybe not always get the attention. You know? And yeah, you have an aluminum craft, aluminum boat, just like I run an aluminum boat. But you go out there and you kick butt, right? Um, so, and I've always, I've leaned on you quite a bit for information many times to get, you know, the pulse on things and that. Right. And the, but the thing that impresses me the most about Adam is everyone kind of has their their forte, right, in fishing. Like, you can kind of tell who's, like, you know, someone's really good at doing muskies. Or, like, like Adam here, like, you can go bass fish anywhere, right, and figure it out and do this, you know. But you seem to catch everything. Oh, yeah. And it's mm -hmm. not, I mean, obviously, it's the Crappie Chronicles, right? That's, that's the name of your group, right? Big Crappies, which you catch big Crappies. Some of the biggest ones anyone can find. But you also catch giant walleyes, huge bluegills, big muskies, 65-pound flathead catfish. You just are fishy. You're a fishy dude. And I think, I, think, I think here's my prediction and maybe hope. You, you've underutilized your talent in terms of educating people. I think you haven't even seen what you're capable of yet. That's just my opinion. And maybe that's my hope for you. Because I think you know how to be really good at all of it. And that's scary. Scary in a good way. So right. whether it's crappies, bluegills, all that stuff. So whatever path you're going down, I tell you not to stop. Because I see you guiding more and doing that. And, and I can tell you, and Adam knows, you just kind of alluded to it. If you're looking to book somebody to learn the most you can about oh, yeah. whatever you want, Griff's that guy. 
So I think, uh, you know, you can talk about all the big crappies you want. That's cool. But what I want people to know and understand this is I think your fame has come from catching freak show crappies. But for the guys on the inside that have gotten to know Adam, he catches everything. Like, oh, yeah. and, he know, and he knows how to catch them, and he knows how to catch them well. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, and pardon my fresh, it pisses me off. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's always catching good fish. He's always on the bite. And if he's not, he figures it out so weirdly quick. Yeah. That it's it's crazy. You got that fishbone, man. So w- whatever it is, man, uh, keep it rolling. I've always said rolling. that Griff is the fishiest person I yeah. know. And like with catching everything, like people don't even realize, like dude won the Denny's Angler of the I, Year. I know. Like against Fighter Figgy, mm-hmm. like literally everybody. Griff won it. Yep. Yeah. Like that's that, back when that's, <laughs> that's back, back when, when everyone. everybody was there. Yeah. 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 Capras, everybody, raveling everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've I've called Griff before texting him. I remember in the past where it's like, hey, I need to try to catch a walleye on Tonka, and he'll reply with, oh, what area of the lake? Yeah, it's like <laughs> I don't care. I just need to catch one. I don't, oh, I don't. Well, where are you going to launch? Because I have different spots. Yeah. yeah. So like, you, you got a finger on the pulse, man. So it's it's pretty fun to watch. It, and, uh, you know, and I've known you for a while and you're being a little modest you, you, you fished mn pan and things like that no no you cleaned house in mn pan he won like you, every tournament you, you, did, you, did, you, <laughs> handed the you didn't you didn't show up and, and get some mentorship you showed up as called a rookie and basically said i can win this i think and you yeah. did i mean i know ted and sparky well personally they fished the upl and then branched off and started the mn pan right and i remember they were like this dude his name's adam griffith we can't beat him. And then they're like, and he's catching like two pounders. I think you caught like a two pounder on like, yeah. was it Lake Sarah or something yep. like that? Is yeah. that still the record? How yeah. big was that yeah. one? Yeah, it was uh, 208. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember Ted and Sparky were like, not only does he just beat everybody, but he's catching like world class crappies on lakes I didn't think they existed in. So um, kudos, different. man. Whatever you're doing, dude, keep it up. It's Appreciate awesome. It. What's up, you're Pink? You know, huh? Pink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into this. <laughs> oh boy. I feel like my track might be just a little bit different than these guys, especially because they kind of grew up around here. Um, and, I mean, I, I, I'm i originally from Wisconsin, so I kind of – my early years were all over there. Um, to be honest, I don't really know where it all started initially. I feel like I literally have, like, baby pictures of me at, like, stocker trout ponds and stuff, catching fish and doing all this stuff. Um, but my dad, he's got three brothers. So I got like basically my dad's side of the family. Um, they got into fishing, I think at a young age as well. Um, it wasn't like the whole family was fishermen by any means. Um, but they all grew up, uh, right around Milwaukee area and grew up like salmon fishing uh, on the Great Lakes. So that was kind of like my earliest memories are, are salmon fishing and, you know, catching stock trout, that type of thing. But my family, as far as I can remember back, has always gone for a week to northern Wisconsin. We stayed up on the Three Lakes chain uh, by Eagle River. And to this day, I swear I still call that like my home water, even though I don't live there at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I grew up around Milwaukee um, when I was, I mean, probably first, second grade, we moved to Minnesota. And uh, that was kind of how I made some friends here was just fishing. I mean, fishing ponds, riding our bikes to every piece of water within five miles of our house and catching anything, whether it was like bullheads, goldfish, bluegill, whatever, it didn't matter. And uh, it just all, like, all I can remember is that's the only activity, like, during the summertime that I ever wanted to do, you know. I grew up hunting, doing all that stuff too, but in the summertime, it was just me and, like, three or four of my buddies, and all we did was just fish anywhere that we could get, or we'd get somebody's parents to, like, drive us to a different neighborhood so we could fish over there, you know. Um, and, you know, when I was probably like, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years old, I started fishing um, muskie tournaments with my dad. We fished like the national championship over in Eagle River every year. It's a huge open tournament. Mm-hmm. There's like 1,500 plus people in that thing every year. And, uh, and him and my uncles fished a lot of muskie tournaments growing up. So I, you know, between like fishing salmon on Lake Michigan and muskie fishing, that was kind of like my passion was like, let's chase big fish, you know, like we'd mess around here and catch panfish and stuff. But I literally hated 
fishing for bluegills, crappies, all that stuff. That was like the lowest priority in my life was fishing for little fish. <laughs> and now you're part of the crop crop. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it was like, it was like, all I want to do is catch he some cooks fruits. the crop. He kills the fish. Yeah. yeah. You got to, <laughs> yeah. he's here for a reason. Yeah. He is well, still getting satisfaction. Yeah. And that's the other thing is like, that was what, you know, we had fun fish, like our sport fishing was these big fish. If we wanted to like harvest some fish we'd go catch some walleyes or some crappies or whatever and uh you know we were fit catching them for a fish fry not because we thought catching big crappies was cool you know and granted that area of the, the country really doesn't have a lot of big ones but i mean we still targeted them and uh so i kind of got the tournament fishing bug when i was really young and doing these musky tournaments and being competitive that way um and i didn't really have a group of friends that did that it was just me and you know i had three buddies that lived in my neighborhood that if I called them up, they'd probably come fishing with me, but they really, you know, they wanted to play baseball and do all this other stuff. And I was like, you just want to let finish. me, let me know when your practice is over, right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, that was just kind of like growing up like that. And, uh, when I, when I ultimately like went to college, I went to Stevens point. And w so the, the cabin that we'd went to in Northern Wisconsin every year, it was just like a rental like resort thing. Right. And uh, there was, you know, a guy there who, um, his name's Tyler Glockner. He probably, I, I mean. I actually know him. Yeah. yeah. So From college so, fishing, yeah. So, yeah. So, he, him and uh, Ted Johnson, actually, were yep. going to Point at the same time. And they kind of started the bass fishing team at Point. Yep. And uh, it was pretty small, I think, when he was there. But I remember, you know, his family, his entire family literally went the same week we went every year. So, I knew them pretty well. And, uh when I heard about like this bass fishing team thing in college, I was like, well, that sounds pretty sweet. And I was not like a bass fisherman at all, really. Um, you ate them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like we didn't really even target them. Right. Like we'd go to all these places and yeah, we'd catch smallmouth and stuff, whatever, but it wasn't like, let's go bass fishing. It was like, you also are catching bass, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so I heard about like this bass fishing team thing and the whole college fishing situation. And I was like, well, that sounds pretty cool. You know? So I literally went to Stevens Point because he told me that that was like a thing there. And I was interested in natural resources anyway. So I was like, let's check it out. And I actually, you know, whatever applied got in there, which was probably a good thing. Cause I don't know what the game plan was after that, but <laughs> you know, I remember going there and coincidentally I was going there at the same time with Sam Sobiak and a bunch of other buddies of these guys now. Um, so it was like kind of these parallel paths. Like I didn't know any of these guys growing up at all. And, uh, so whatever went there, got on the fishing team, um, and then just started bass fishing. So literally the first bass tournament I ever fished in my life was a college bass fishing tournament. So, okay. Trial, and, trial by fire, huh? Yeah. And we won it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a borrowed boat. Like this guy that uh, I was going to point with, his, his like he had a boat or whatever. And I don't know that he was really into it at all, but I asked him if he wanted to go to the meeting with me. Like, hey, you want to just check this thing out? Yeah, okay, whatever. He went there. He said, oh, I got this boat. It's like, well, they got a tournament in a couple of weeks. You want to do it? Yep. All right. Where was that at? So it was a small, it was a, uh, on the beer and flowage, which is just south of Stevens Point on the Wisconsin River. And uh, we went out there and practiced. We didn't catch a single fish in practice. Uh, I actually, so my dad also went to Stevens Point back in the day and he, there was no fishing team or anything like that, but he fished a ton on the river. And I talked to him that night and I was like, Dude, I got nothing. <laughs> like, I, was like, I literally got nothing. And uh, and you know, there's the there's a spillway at the north end of it, and there's a second part of it that's like kind of hard to get to. And he's like, I don't know, I caught a bunch of bass up there, you know. And I was like, all right. So and this this is not my boat at all. This other guy, he's just like letting me drive. Like I'm running like it's my rig, and and we're we're running up, and it's everything's rock. It's like all this stuff, and we we go up to this other spillway thing, and like thank God we made it there. And literally, I think in probably 25 minutes, we had the bag we weighed in just like instantly. They were just on fire. And then the trolling motor died like probably 45 minutes into our day. And that was pretty much it. So we just spent the rest of the day floating down the river, hanging out, went to the, <laughs> went to, went to the way in. And so Cody Honor was actually uh, on the team then too. And I remember him pulling up to it. They drove by us on the river and asked if everything was like, you guys good? And we're like, oh yeah, man. Like, you know, Sherlock Motors dead. And it's like heavy current. So it's yeah. not like you really do anything. And uh, we're like, yeah, no, like we caught some fish, whatever, you know. And we didn't know what we had. Like I literally never fished a bass tournament before. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. We caught some smallies, whatever. And they're like, okay, cool. 
And this is at like, you know, nine in the morning. So it's like we fished the whole day and then we just like, we just hang out. We, we go to the weigh in and I remember dumping them in the tub. We had like almost 18 pounds and on that part of the river, that's like a really good bag. And so we ended up we're like winning the first one. So I think then it was like, you know, then if you're having success, people want to like talk to you. So I made friends really quick, you know, like, hey, yeah. and you're like, I guess I'm doing this. Yeah. So that, that was kind of like my entry into like that part of it which actually got me, you know, a lot more like friends that ended up being from around here. So, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, the whole growing up part of it was all this like multi-species stuff, never really targeting like one, you know, like I said, musky fishing was kind of like my first passion and I still do that a ton. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and like the ice fishing stuff, I remember I hated ice fishing. I was like, my dad would want to go and I'm like, it's so cold. <laughs> you know and uh, as a kid you know i'm like whatever and we're out there and like i said we never really targeted these like pan fish and stuff and then kind of getting into that world was was kind of secondary i guess and and then the whole you know living around here changed that a lot because the actual opportunities to do it are insane and there was so much stuff that we could get on super easily and uh and like i i know bart would talk about this because the like the crappie chronicles idea is kind of old. Like you guys thought it was yeah. like a, it's before we actually started doing it. Like you guys have talked about this for like a number of years. Yeah. 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 No, this, <clears throat> this has been a long time brewing. I mean, this kind of started with, um, back when I was filming the first year I filmed with team Yukon outdoors. Um, <clears throat> like I was telling Matt kind of a bit beforehand, I, uh, like I started filming fishing, because of necessity not because i wanted to necessarily um i was a part of team yukon outdoors which like our one of our best friends brent Earl lopez started with sam moore uh before sam moore went off to do more media and everything so at that point when they had split he brought in like me Sobe, and a bunch of other guys will stolsky um people are kind of around the industry now to be honest and um well, Sobe got hired by AP Bassin to go film YouTube full time. Well, suddenly we didn't have a cameraman and there was going to be ice fishing in a month and a half. And I was like, you know, sure, I'll try it. And, uh, you know, I ended up love filming it. Well, that winter we ended up being on the ice every single weekend and I was gone every weekend for three or four months. But around the holidays, <laughs> I had called, uh, I actually had called Griff because I was like, I don't want to drive anywhere. I want to stay home for the holidays. And he was like, yeah, dude, we'll go film. And that was the year him and I went and filmed. That was his first time ever being on camera, I think. Oh. And we went and filmed and the fish were for some reason in two feet, not 18, but we still got it done. And then we were driving home and uh, Waldo called me and he's like, hey dude, it's going down right now. So I go pull into that ramp with like di literally dying batteries. Like everything's all camera batteries are dying and everything. I am not prepared to film at night. We had no light, like nothing. And we go out there and I think we caught, what was it? Like five over 14. I don't know. It was, it, it was, it was a was lot. It, it was really good. And we put the hammer down, had two episodes. You caught your PB that night too. Or what was your PB? Yeah, it was like a little, it was Maybe like a 15 and a half, and a half. Something, 15 something and like half. that. <laughs> yeah. 11 and a half. Yeah, yeah. No, like a 15 and a half inch black. And then, um, yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of the history. Then all of a sudden I looked at him and I was like, well, we'll just do this Metro Crappie mini series. And we did that like four or five years ago. And uh, then, yeah, just recently when I started working for myself, I called these guys and was like, we should just do this, the whole thing. Because everybody says, you know, you want to drive up north, go wherever um, to catch the biggest crappies. And we had always believed, like, dude, there's like top tier top top tier crappies in the twin cities and i mean i feel like that's kind of what we showed there yeah. really is um and yeah that's where it completely came from yeah. that the twin cities are a blessing for fishing like they're so good for all yeah. species uh, yeah everything yeah. I mean, well that's why i think it's crazy that like all of this is kind of like the culmination of like all this stuff we were all doing even though everyone's kind of like parallel paths like it's not like you guys were always being like oh let's let's create this group where we're gonna like do this thing you know, it just kind of no. worked out it that just every, it just happened. Yeah, yeah you know? I didn't, I didn't meet, I didn't meet Ryan until I was throwing a party. Like it might have even been around like my twentieth, twentieth, twenty. I didn't even know you when I went like to that. the party. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was my twenty second birthday. That's your um, at my parents in New Prague, 
And they were like, yeah, you can have a bunch of friends over. You're finally home for a summer. So I had a bunch of people over and, um, you Sam know, we were having a good me, time. Yeah. Yeah. And Sam Sobiak was like, <laughs> hey, dude, yeah, I got this guy you would love to meet. And he came with, I think AP came too. Yep. And, and, and yeah. yeah, his lady at the time. <laughs> and um, they all came over and I was like, who's this guy? And then Ryan and Bo Brower talked about Pike for like two and a half hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and yeah, that's literally how I met yeah. Ryan. I didn't even meet him until like six seven years ago and now he's one of my best friends so i, I remember i actually remember some of the, those first episodes when you guys caught him after dark so i remember you told me you were like i just caught the biggest crappies of my life and you were jacked up well and dude then what was crazy about that winter was that was two weeks after i still to this day will say i caught the biggest bluegill ever caught on film right i caught that two pounder out yep. and you know, I won't even say where because yeah. <laughs> people are going to hear this and go. But, yeah, like there's an old video of uh, Andrew Osowski catching a one pound, 13.7 ouncer and then me catching one that dwarfed it. It was like a two pound, one, two pound, two ouncer. It was literally it was it was insane. <laughs> it was so big. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you, I mean, I, I think I speak on behalf of anyone watching or listening. Like we're happy the Chronicles came to fruition because like. I think a lot of people have learned so much. And I think the, one of the coolest things, and we'll get into more of the Chronicles in this discussion, but one of the coolest things I think is how genuine each of you are when you film this, right? Like, it's never scripted. You know, nope. it's pretty raw. I mean, I'd love to see the outtakes. <laughs> I've heard that. You don't want to see it. I've well, heard delete. enough <laughs> of yeah. it. But Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Generally, there isn't a lot of outtakes because I just put them in. Right. Um, but, yeah, there is. All, I don't know. All, I guess if There's enough, if enough people blow up the trailer we put out just earlier this week, I will put out a, like, two-minute clip of Waldo just losing it while we were filming the ending scene of blow the up the trailer please yeah so blow that up and there's two really 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 good scenes that'll come out all those dead quiet right now on the other side of this he's not even he's, he's like it's pretty shame. funny he's feeling yeah. shame yeah one of them is yeah one of them really i mean i know funny. they're both terrible although okay one's just bad both look they're really bad. We yes, should see both of them. one's just bad <laughs> one's really funny well let's ju we'll judge we'll judge you in a positive <laughs> oh that way. is a-okay yeah. i'm okay with that yeah yeah but, so people blow this up like go share everything let's get it you go into the next level and you know i'll put out a little bit of dirt on matt waldron i mean i i know the effort you guys put into this and i and i don't know if the viewers do you know, I mean, I know because we guys we talk on a regular basis, text, keep in communication. Like the amount of time you guys put in yeah. to produce the finished product, right? I know it sounds cliche, right? But no one can probably comprehend some of the stuff you guys have been through. No. Um, the the hours, the time, um, not to open wounds, but like broken in vehicles. Oh yeah. I mean, like the things you guys have experienced to film and put out a product for people to be better at catching fish, right? So like, and I think that goes to be, that, that can be said about a lot of shows, right? TV shows are just things, you know, yeah, sometimes you pull up and there's a layup and you just have that magical day. But I think everyone that has done any of this can tell you that's never usually the case. Like there's a lot of blood, sweat and, sweat and tears. And what you usually see at the end of the day is usually, you know, let's say it's a, an hour episode, right? You see most of the good, right? You're not seeing necessarily all the ugly you may see the good and some of the bad but rarely do you see the ugly right then that's just kind of how that's kind of how it has to be but what i what i'm getting at is like i just can't fathom how much time is spent you're you're, you're targeting a one tenth of one percent of the species right yeah. yeah you are you're targeting a true giant and we're not talking 13 inches right mm -hmm. i've heard days when you guys will talk to me and be like it was tough and and it's relative, everyone listening. You, you say it's tough. All we caught was 13 inches today. Yeah. And and, <laughs> yeah. and and then if you're the average ice thing, they're going, what? I haven't caught a 13 inch all year, all year, right? So, But just to know and put into perspective, you guys are trying to accomplish really darn near, not darn near the impossible at times. Yeah. And, and it's, it's pretty impressive. So, like, with the whole putting time in, I'm going to just lead into one part of this thing we wanted to do, too, and then we'll all dive into this. But one thing that takes way more time than people think it does, and it doesn't when you actually do it, is the cooking parts. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of times where Ryan and I are up filming all the cooking till midnight or one, and Waldo and Griff 
or maybe like just hanging out in the back or like maybe take a nap or like whatever. <laughs> and then they even go to bed. So like that's always happening. And that's also where we are going to talk about Ryan's going to cook some food here. So if Ryan wants to kind of go do that, if you're watching on YouTube, you can like definitely go do that. So Ryan, if you kind of want to cook, so those take a lot of time. I'm very hungry. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> of course you are. So. <laughs> One thing about Ryan quick before you, he vacates the scene is when I first heard of Ryan, I didn't know who you were. No disrespect. Like I, I, I'm not, we're not the same age bracket, right? You know, and then I thought it was just this guy who likes to cook. And I'm like, oh, cool element to the Crappie Chronicles. But the first time I really got to meet you, we went fishing in southern Minnesota. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you cooked. By the way, you cooked. It's 35 mile an hour winds. You cooked inside the, the bed of a truck with a topper, and it was still to the day the best street tacos I've ever had in my entire life. They were awesome. They were Dude, so good. No, so I mean, and, and, and I'm t- you guys remember that day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got oh, yeah. a video I posted. It's blown like 35. I, I remember, it was I remember Brock was with us. And his, oh, yeah. his hair was straight sideways the yeah, entire day. Yeah, it was brutal. And we caught some. It wasn't even cold, but it, it was wasn't. Cold. It was blowing it was so ripping. hard. Yeah. It, was, it was like 50 degrees because we were driving and, across And blowing water. like 35 mile an hour yeah. straight, sustained yeah. the whole day. Yeah, that was brutal. And I remember watching you guys catch these big fish. But what I remember is my, my, my assumption of Ryan was, oh, this guy's just a spanko when it comes to fishing, right? That, that's just my assumption. They brought him on to cook. I'll tell you what, dude. You caught some of the larger fish that day. Caught Actually, caught my PB I re- white. I, that I, day. Remember, yeah, I remember. Right. I remember. I remember looking, and, and I was fishing by Sobe because I remember Bart said they just brought me along to run around. That's my job. I just cut holes. <laughs> and remember Waldo because I can't catch them. And I remember Waldo and Griff were plucking out all these big crappies, and I got sick and tired of running around. So I knelt by Sobe, and we just sat and BSed. And remember. Pink Hollow was like 10 yards behind me. And He's remember, in front of the truck. And I remember so, from and everybody. he hasn't moved. And I remember Sobey's like, dude, Ryan's got another one. I look over. And he's like, good one. Good one. And he's got three Yeah. And I'm, look, and I'm looking at the rest of the crew running around like chickens with their heads cut off, catching some fish, but just chasing. And Ryan's just over here all quiet, like another big one. <laughs> no, they're getting bigger. Yeah, another big yeah. one. And I'm like, wait a second. This dude can fish. And then I learned your history. I'm like, well. Well, yeah, the guy's an angler. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he may be the best cook I've ever seen in the bed of a pickup truck with his 30 mile an hour winds, <laughs> yeah. but he can catch fish too. So and that was an eye opener for me to, to learn more about who Ryan Pincala was. Cause I knew, I already knew you three yeah. chumps at that point for years, but I had just met you and, you know, you, you won me over with your cooking and you can catch big crappies. <laughs> and now it sounds like you, you hunt muskies and all these other big fish. So that's, and awesome. he's an amazing hunter too yeah i see like, it on social and media that's why i think he fits so well with us because what we do isn't really fishing it's more of hunting chasing right. that one specific target fish and right. i think that's why he is so good at it too and fits perfectly in with all of us is because that's what he does yeah so yeah. and he writes yeah he's been sending me articles for <laughs> yeah. the ice team now, digital magazine now ryan has a uh, ice team digital frozen kitchen yeah. right the frozen that's what kitchen. It's yeah we're putting out a few kitchen. recipes now yeah. so i think it's gonna be sweet oh, yeah. so okay. yeah the, that the last cook- recipe by the way Anna was like oh, doing that. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i mean yeah the cooking part of it I, I mean i've just become passionate about it over time i guess but that was always something because like i said you know growing up that's we're fishing to catch stuff to eat you know and and i People ask me all the time, like, well, did, oh, your parents probably, like, taught you how to cook and do all this stuff. And it's like, definitely not. No, they <laughs> like, did not. No. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese, cut up hot dogs. So that's what I there's no way they can take credit for that in yeah. any way. But, um, <laughs> but no, it's just kind of one of those things that just, whatever, you get the bug, you know, and you just start going down the rabbit hole and things, things just start happening. So that's kind of how that happened. But on that note, I think you're... <laughs> Go yeah. cook some food. I know. I can hear the stomachs growling over here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so oh, it's bad. Ryan, <laughs> well, well, you want to whip that up? I'm going to eat this mic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Worry, so I'm going to worry about like uh, any sprinklers going off in there. I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Dave. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's make some food. We'll get this going. And, and then, uh, Drew, cover the sprinkler. Yeah, we'll, the sprinkler uh, spouts and- <laughs> then, Matt, we can dive. I didn't mean to divert your question, but, yeah, we can dive into, like, the hours that go on behind the scenes, too, yeah. with it. Because that is part of it. Like, yeah, the cooking, yeah. we do, yes, it takes yeah. a lot. All it, right, I'm yeah. going to get this going. You All guys right. keep chatting. Okay. But, uh, yeah, the hours behind the scenes are, and everything. I think we were talking this year when we were planning everything for season three and kind of what we're going to do. I kind of added up all the days we put in on the ice last year targeting these fish. And um, I think it came out to be, like, 45 to 50 days. And if you really think about, like, like Waldo has a full-time job. 
Pink has a full-time job. Griff is a guide. You know, my full-time job is media work and everything, but I'm also producing some other content, you know, for other brands and clam and stuff like that. Well, we have other jobs going along with this. Well, that's like in three months, you're talking about like 40% of your days right there. Mm -hmm. And then also spinning it around and producing it and everything like it, it. it's a lot of time. And also like there were nights we were out there till two or three in the morning. Um, yeah. cause we thought we could get one really big one. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it is. What was your, like, we don't need to give details on spots, but like, what was your biggest home run? Like after just saying you had nights out till two, three in the morning, like, did you have any of those situations come to fruition where you're like, like, did any of those pan out to be an absolute home run for you guys? Or is it more trial and error trying to stay on the bite, trying to stay on the fish, trying to figure things out? Or yeah. did any of that ever be like that That day was a, was one of the 16s or one of the big fish? Or did it play out to become one of them because you cracked the code on something? Or or is that just part of the battle? It has in it was previous part years. Of the battle. It's part of the battle. I mean, it has in previous years, but that's like kind of the cool thing about it is we just try – everything we don't leave any rock unturned just because there's that one time where it is the key mm-hmm. yeah. so you basically got to recrack the code every time yeah so i mean we've had it work in the past like season one what what time was that that we did that 24 hour episode where we caught that one <laughs> like four <laughs> yeah it was like i don't know what time the, was it? i remember I that fell episode. Asleep stand, i legitimately fell asleep standing up yeah <laughs> like pink Hollow watched me fall oh, yeah. i fell asleep standing up but yeah it was like <laughs> huh Oh, yes, yeah. the cop that, thing. The cop. Yeah, you have, if, that, you have a clip of that. Uh, I, I might have a GoPro. I should have a GoPro clip of that somewhere. Actually, if or I really looked for moose? it, because uh, the moose, the moon, it was the, the moon, moon whatever. Yeah, moons. and then pink, and yeah. I got so tired of hole hopping in negative five at three in the morning that pink <laughs> literally brought out like an extendable foldable elevated cot and laid it next to his hole with his Vexlar and just sat there for five minutes jigging and then stood up, dragged the cot and his Vexlar to the next hole, put it down. <laughs> like, I don't think people understand. Like, we don't, we don't sh- like, stay put. We're not chill. So, like, he even brought a cot to hole hop. Like, yeah. and you guys don't just night. punch through holes, slip a trap, and sit there all day? <laughs> well, there's one lake, that lake. That's yeah. why we were camped there. Yeah. But uh, we ended up catching it on the opposite side of the lake. I think we logged, what was it, like 11 miles on your Fitbit that night? Walking. Yeah, that was it was something nuts. like that, and this is on a lake. Matt's that's trying like, to forget uh, that night. This it is like a four hundred or five hundred acre lake. Like we just yeah. did laps. Yeah, it was unbelievable. But uh, that wasn't our most miserable though. No, last that, year the backwater one that we did, where you had the brilliant idea of bringing out that ice house. I don't oh, remember God. this one. Yes, you do. We walked two miles. Yeah, that was not fun. Is that where we caught all the white crappies? Yeah, yes. the whole trail oh, yeah. was sand. <laughs> yeah, Pinkala actually no last snow. night on the podcast we were recording told me that it's not bad walking that far dragging a house. And I was like, I know a few I other people that would beg to, to differ. differ. 100%. There was no snow. It was straight sand. Yeah. We had a Yukon <laughs> ice team edition fully loaded to the brim. Yeah, because we got to bring camera gear with. Yeah, which that's another big thing. Dealing with camera gear is not the most fun thing in the world. Well, Batteries. I know you guys have had some footage not turn out because of elements and stuff, I believe, right? Dude, yeah. There's Otter, been some days you've caught some really big counting. crappies and you're like, we can't even show them to the world because, you know, well, up things in happen, Otter tail, it's I had a complete mic failure. Right. So I had to deal with that. But, um, yeah, no, like the elements are crazy. And I, in regards to like the all night thing, having something pay out, I think we did have – one where we ended up finishing the year was a lake that I had history on, but I didn't know the code. And so I dragged them down there once. We got one big hybrid. And then we went there again thinking that it was going to be after dark. Got another big hybrid, but then it died after dark. And we learned, okay, it's not a night bite, so we need to be here all day. Mm-hmm. And then um, kind of it was more of a midday decision, but like, I mean, Waldo will say it like he had, he had completely written the lake off, oh, yeah. and in my head, Pissed I had just <laughs> kept having this <laughs> I was not nagging that. suspension or suspicion, and like telling me you need to go back, you need to go back. And w- what people don't get is like we'll revisit lakes like three times a week, four times a week, whatever it is, just to see when it clicks. Because a lot of it is it just clicks for a certain yeah, right. amount of time, 
And um, I was bugging Waldo all day. We went to a new lake, and we were kind of catching fish, but it died out. And I was like, dude, we just need to go swing by. Just swing by quick. We'll go to a different one. I just want to swing in. We can drive our trucks out there. I want to drill like 10 holes, and I just want to see what we see in this one area that we had figured out. Fish were kind of hanging around. Um, and we, I mean, that was the best decision we probably made. I mean, one of the best decisions we made all oh, year. Yeah. We pulled out there, drilled three holes, and in five minutes caught a 15 and three quarter, a 15 and a half, and a 15 and a quarter. Yeah. Was it? Something like that. That 15 and three quarter was my biggest hybrid ever. Yeah. Uh, I think was how huge. many lakes do, in a, in a ice season chasing down these big crappies, how many lakes do you hit in a season? We hit eight that weekend. No, six yeah. that weekend. I mean, are you hit, hitting dozens of different lakes throughout oh, yeah. the winter oh, yeah. trying yeah. to find these oh, big yeah. bites? Yeah. yeah, probably total, I'd say. 30, including 30. different river areas. And of those and like 30 you lakes, revisit a lot of them. So yeah. that's yeah. like, we'll, we'll be on a lake for like three hours in the morning and be like, nope, it's dead here and leave and go drive, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. But like, you know, we tell people it's all within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis. You mm-hmm. could, I mean, we hold true to that. They're, those guys have wanted to go places that oh, are a so hair hilarious. outside that. And yeah. I'll drop a Google pin right in the middle of Minneapolis, right by Target Field or whatever it is, and draw a straight line as the crow flies. And it'll be like 63. And I'm like, nope. Yeah. And we won't go. And if you do, you've told people, you know, you've never tried to, like the otter tail trip, yeah. right? Like you've yeah. told, yeah. it hasn't, yep. it hasn't yep. been a, like a, you're no. not trying to hide anything. We're like, hey, we're no. going to go have some fun. And, and like that one, we stayed within the county limits and that was our, yeah. Our border was, it was a bon- like a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, g- so you hit 30 lakes and most of these lakes you've hit again. Yeah. Over and over and over yeah. and over and over. Fun. There are a few we haven't been back to. Like, we'll just go check them out. Cause like you hear, I mean, obviously like we all hear rumors throughout a season. Right. And since we've started doing this, I feel like we get a lot of tips, um, which we appreciate from people, obviously. I mean, we'll keep them coming. But uh, once we'll kind of wait till once we get a few and it's like, okay, maybe we want to dip out here. And there's been a couple that have been good that have led to maybe getting an right. episode done. But I feel like generally we got a pretty good pulse and we've on what's kind of learned like when you get to a lake, if you start seeing just like certain fish, like you you know what I mean? You know, right? build like, a fish, your class. You know what I mean? Like, right. uh, you fish the lake and you're like, okay, they're all stunted. Like, right. yeah. You, you don't see larger fish at all. You know, you're just kind of like, yeah, let's get out of here. You can see the build time, you know. So what is the largest thing. crop that you guys put on film? Is, it was 16 and a half, was it, yeah. last yeah. year? Yeah, it was 16 and a half, not a pinch tail, and it was a stub tail. Right. Yeah. So it was, I mean, Griff and I have looked at it probably a lot of times. It was probably it was 17. Yeah, but your, but your personal best is how big? 18 and three quarter. Mm-hmm. And how many over that 18 mark? 20 at least. See, we deserve a pause for that. Yeah. yeah. Moment of silence. silence. <laughs> That's and, no, and none of them are dead. Yeah. I didn't, I know. I didn't I know. kill yeah. any of them, I yeah. should yeah. say. How about yeah. you? What's yours, Waldo? Uh, would be 17 and a quarter yep. right now. Black crappie and then that 15 and three quarter hybrid last year. And then white crappie, I think it's like 15 and a half or something like that. Yep. But Griff, you've got well, that giant one, white crappie, giant hybrid crappie. That one you caught on the... River when we didn't have the tape, that one was probably your biggest hybrid. Oh yeah, that's right. We just didn't have a tape, so it's hard for them. We measured it on the rod, and yeah. it was anywhere from yeah. sixteen and a quarter. That's the one we to, saw on film, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that super was tall, like episode super three. tall. Yeah, we yeah. measured it that on a rod, one, yeah. so that's why I don't really count it because we don't know. It's not an official board. It's yeah. not an official board, so I mean, it, it was a huge, amazing, beautiful it was fish. Over sixteen for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Special. So we had a range on it, but. We wanted to get it back quick. We didn't measure it on an official measuring board. We kind of bumped it up to a rod. Cool. And, yep. and I think the biggest thing with that is what I, I hope everyone understands with where we're filming these is um, people do see us. Like, we're not hidden. We are hidden in plain sight. Like, there were 50 people in the background of that video when we were filming it, oh, yeah. and it was definitely the most awkward filming experience of my life. 
because it was not good. It, it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> not good. Well, it, was, <laughs> it was just so awkward because, um, I mean, like, Matt, we preach catch and release with big fish and everything, right? Well, like, we had Matt Pangrak from uh, Oklahoma doing Bass Talk Live. It was his first time ever ice fishing. And uh, he came up to ice fish with us, and we took him out here, and it's like the sun's just poking up. You can barely see across, like, the slough. And um, you can – hear a little bit of rustling but it's kind of like like flopping and you're like what is that and you're like walking by holes and there are dozens of 14 to 15 inch crappies just flopping on the ice getting picked off by people and like paying rack looks at me and he's like is this typical i'm like not really and he's like so like how long will this place last i'm like oh this dies today <laughs> like <laughs> this this yeah. we we have a limited window so we got in there and we filmed it yeah, it was crazy. I mean, we have great experiences with a lot of people we film with on the ice, but that day we had people, like, giving us – they were giving us a hard time for releasing fish, which was kind of blowing my oh, mind, they were actually. So mad. Yeah, they were so mad. We're like, well, now you can have a chance to catch it. Like, right. Yeah. They were not – What's the problem? They were not having yeah, it. Yeah, Walder us. released, like, an almost 17-inch crappie, and we were hearing oh, swearing and jaw-jacking in the back. We were, were like, so what's pissed. going on? <laughs> That's why I didn't yeah, get to measure really, it. Really I, I released it so quick, I didn't want to get knifed or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was definitely sketchy. We have been back there, though. There yeah. wasn't as many people, thankfully. Yeah, and it oh, wasn't, the people were a lot nicer the second time. Yeah, the second time. How yeah. was the fishing the second time? Or, or did, did it hold true to your assumption that well, uh, that it, was going to take such a beating that the bite would be totally changed? The nice thing about the river, and like Griff will attest to, because he's taught us a lot about these rivers, is, is um, a lot of them reload eventually. It's mm -hmm. a conveyor belt. It's though. a conveyor belt, but yeah. like when it gets eradicated that week, it's going to take like a month or two or three or maybe a year for the conveyor belt to restart it yeah sure because um, they might be trapped um you might need a new school to move in whatever but like that school that weekend <laughs> it, it was no more <laughs> yeah because it's a it's a constant change too because matt milbrandt actually taught us a lot about fishing the rivers you know he's from hastings mm -hmm. and he, yeah. he, he taught us a lot about just how to approach and attack these different bodies of water from what we had really ever fished before and he uh he said, like, it, it'll get crushed the first couple of weeks as soon as you get that early ice. And then late ice, middle of winter, it'll start getting flurries where waves of fish will pull up to feed and whatnot. Because it's a big current break, essentially, is what it is. And it, it just allows a resting place for fish to feed, really. So, you and Milbrand have a history. Yeah, we do. Have you guys have some plaques on your wall, some yeah. team champ, some team of the year championships. Yeah. People can't hear this right now, but there's just a beautiful sizzle happening in the background of Pinkala putting food on a Utah stove. I can hear stove. it. Do we, yeah. need, do we need another moment of silence? We or? do. Yeah. That was a good moment of silence. So, so of silence. <laughs> you, you've referenced three different target species here, right? You have black crappies, white crappies, and hybrids. Yep. And, uh, you know, I've gone around and around with people on the hybrid crappie, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm clearly a believer in it, but the DNR still doesn't notify it as a technical species, right? Not in Minnesota. Right. Yeah. And then that's okay. I'm not going to get into the weeds. But my, my question there was actually, have you found a distinct difference on those three species when you target them on how you target them and how they act? Or are, oh, you, looking, or are you looking at yeah. crappies in a similar light? Like, obviously, I, black crappies, white crappies, right? Totally, totally different. different. But yeah. when it comes to a hybrid, do you target that differently than you do a black or a white? I or does it align like more? I was going to yeah. say, does it align more like a white? It yeah. aligns That's more like I've a white. Yeah. They have the aggressiveness of a white. Right. Yeah. I think it's right. just like a hybrid. And like, well, obviously, we believe in hybrids because we post pictures of them and say they're hybrids. But Likewise. like with, yep. with, with a hybrid, like you target them like a white, but w the way we really target it is you target them as the apex predator. I yeah, think that's right, yeah. what a hybrid really is. Like when you see, I mean, like I was talking to Jimmy Lawrence who does taxidermy for a lot of the places who get state records, um, like the California one that got sent to him. He was like, it's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not a black. And um, so like he's saying too, like a lot of these fish, like they're genetically different, big, and it's a whole different subject, but they act different and they are like, they are just monsters. They're and mean. when you catch them and they're just bricks, like they look like, like Griff said, has said before, they look like the guy who's been doing deadlifts for just months on months. <laughs> Brock on months. Lesnar. Yeah. yeah. He, they're Brock Lesnar. They That's just got trapped. He actually, Jimmy has a really good article. We'll have to see if we can get that for you guys. Cause 
um, the article that he sent us about the identifying factors of a hybrid crappie where not only does it have stripes, but it has speckles mm-hmm. in between the stripes and then a black spot on the gill plate. Right. And that black spot right on top of the gill plate is the best identifier of a hybrid. And uh, so do you think uh, our state record is a hybrid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. More than likely. Yeah, it's not a black crappie. I mean, but yeah. we, we have it's cool seen that like... It's cool that we're arguing about Minnesota having one of the largest black crappies in the history of our country. Yeah. Right. But I, I'm of the mindset that that's a hybrid. Yeah. More than likely. More than likely. As we understand that how this works more and more over the years. And yeah. Well, and I think No way to know now, right? But no, that's, yeah. I think it's going to be really hard to break just a straight black crappie because just what just I think you're just seeing more hybrids now. Right. Yeah. Like that's just kind of what's happening. It's just becoming a hybridization of the crappie. Because a lot sure. of the lakes that have some of these biggest ones, they have all three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why we're seeing some of them. Of the right. bigger crappies being the hybrids. Too. And most people probably see a hybrid and they just assume it's a white. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what I hear from most people is they see a hybrid crappie and the instant, oh, nice white crappie. And then those who have seen them enough, like if you see a white crappie, yeah, you know a white crappie. Perfectly right? clean. Yeah. But if you don't see a white or a hybrid much at all, let's say the average angler probably doesn't see them that often, right? Yeah. I right. still take people fishing all the time that have never caught a white crappie, lived in Minnesota their whole life. Yeah. You know, because they just target bodies of water that just have blacks. Yeah. So I mean, if, you go if, north of ninety four, you have what? Yeah, very twenty few. lakes yeah. that have white crappies in them. Right. So there, there's not many, but you go south, there's a and, bunch. Oh my gosh! Or the rivers, well, or things the like river, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And rivers it, got a ton. Yeah, yeah, anything connected to a river system or a stream probably has them. But it's mm-hmm. um like even me, like I mean, I all of us it happens to we crappie fish a ton, but like there's certain fish we catch and like we'll look at each other and be like hybrid or white, and you're like. I don't <laughs> you yeah. throw it back because like the yeah, crappie <laughs> and you just yeah. throw it back and different right. lakes it's kind of cool like hybrids look different on different lakes like oh yeah there's sure. some lakes where the hybrids look more like the black crappies do and then there's other lakes where the hybrids look really distinctly close to white crappies so it's i think it's just a big genetic thing yeah so you're 18 and three quarter is a black yep it right. might have been a hybrid i mean i right. didn't at that time i didn't Right. Know as much as I do now. But right. I think I've seen the picture. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. It's a giant. What's no, your favorite one to target? White crappies. Yeah. Straight white. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they're just mad. They're just yeah. mad at the world. Dude, they're, <laughs> the, they're the smallmouth bass of the crappie world. Yeah. They're right. just mean. They just yeah. fly in, hammer it, and then when they fight, they just rip off like they're a pike yeah. about this big. You know, yep. it's just peel and drag, and you're like, I, you usually don't have to coax the white crappie too much. They're, yeah. they're, they're I, mad. I had a client last summer. I took him out, a retired Navy guy. Mm-hmm. Been guiding him for 18 years now. And uh, I hadn't taken him out in a few years. And, and he had some health problems. And he called. And he's like, hey, can we go out fishing? I don't even care what we do. I just, I just want to go in the boat for a day. I don't care. You know, he lives in Royalton, Minnesota. Yeah. I'm in Ramsey. We found a place kind of in the middle. Went and did some fishing. And uh, I'm like, what do you want to fish for? He's like, I'll just go bass fishing. So I just put a swim jig on, 516th down, all train swim jig, and he starts throwing on a spinning rod, beating up a bank. And this was probably like, it was the end of May. Well, actually, it was the uh, June 2nd. And uh, he sets the hook, and I see it jump, and I grab the net, like any guide, right? Whether it's yeah. a one-pound bass or whatever, we grab the net, right? Yep. Yeah. So I grab the net. You and can I'm, never trust Oh, and I'm sitting there, I'm talking <laughs> to him, and it jumps again, and I'm like, Bass had some lines on it. Yeah. You know, it jumps again. And I net it. And it's, it was about a 15-inch white crappie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and to, to your point about, you're like, it's the small mold. This thing destroyed this bass jig. Oh, yeah. And an all-terrain 516th ounce swim jig with a paddle tail on the back, that's a big lure. Mm-hmm. That's a four-inch profile, right? When all yeah. of a sudden, there was no lure showing when I netted this, this white crappie. Yeah. And this thing jumped two or three times, pulled some drag. And he's got a spinning rod with 20-pound braid and a fluorocarbon leader. Mm-hmm. And this thing was fighting. And then I net this thing, and it was a giant white crappie. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, well, that's pretty sweet. It was the biggest crappie he's ever seen in his and life. just the fact it jumped. Oh, it jumped yeah. twice. And yeah. was, on the second jump, I looked at him, and I didn't want to say anything because I'm like, but I'm like, man, that thing had stripes. Yeah. He has a flamethrower out right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pink. Sure. Yeah, pink, <laughs> you see that? pink is blowing a flamethrower flame thrower currently on the food. Uh, sorry, Matt. 
That just really caught me off guard. <laughs> but uh, oh, I remember these. Yeah, I remember these. These are the first things <laughs> yeah, he ever so cooked you on the. Explain what he's. Yeah, what so he's these doing? are. This is if you go back and watch season one, episode two. This is the appetizer that he cooked in the Crappie Chronicles. They are uh, crappie skewers. Um, so yeah, this is one of the recipes he's done. They're super simple, easy to cook. Took him probably about fifteen minutes from when he headed over there, but. Uh, like, yeah. I don't think many people are going to realize it looks Way so simple, the but the time. flavor on these things, like I would pay 30 to $40 for these things at a restaurant. Like, yeah. All day, any day. They're amazing. Yeah. So have you had anything he's cooked you don't love? No. 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 So this is like a major upgrade to the Crappie Chronicles. Oh, 100%. Adding, adding Ryan a couple years back. Yeah. Yeah. No, Absolutely. and sure. I mean, that literally happened because <laughs> he was literally the out, final yeah. puzzle piece. Yeah. <laughs> and that happened because we went out fishing and filmed an episode. We, I mean, the biggest one we got, like you said again, the biggest one we got was like a 13 and a half. And we're like, oh, not big enough. But like, we got all this good content. I was like, Ryan, you want to do a uh, catch and cook? And he was like, yeah, but I'm not going to do one of those Frank's Red Hot challenges or whatever that's going around right now. Like, we're going to ball out. Yeah. And I was like, all right, dope, let's do it. And uh, he came over and just blew all our minds, and I think that was, like, the end of it. Oh, I'm so excited for this food. But, yeah, Matt, to <laughs> your point, too, like, about those whites and what we've learned about whites and hybrids is um, you can use a lot bigger baits to target them. Yeah. And, like, that's Ooh. where I think you see the difference. Mm-hmm. Okay, these – all right so we need to we we have had actually okay me griff or no me waldo and pink olive obviously had these we need to have the guys in the room who haven't had these have these first to judge so that would be yeah one of our our new camera guy luke who's going to be with us all year luke's got to come over and grab one griff didn't get to be with us the first time we had him so he's never had him of the recipes in the crappy chronicles than anyone else Yes. Yeah. Griff has had approximately <laughs> like probably four of the recipes, and then missed we need Matt to have dogs. one, and Drew Juicy, need to have one. Juicy Lucy's. I missed out on the corn dogs too. I was very sad about that. It was too. They were lit. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I know. Come I'm dive kinda, in. Kind of seeing a one. trend that anything you cook's lit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. I don't know about that. You know. <laughs> Dig in, Luke. Grab one. Luke. Drew, come on. Drew, grab one, man. You're, you you know, guys got to grab the one. Mic. Push, push the, the mic over there. Let's get a reaction. My mouth is watering. Well, you got to grab one too. Oh, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Pink, tell us, tell us, what is this recipe? What do you got going into these crappie skewers that these guys are testing? Yeah. So this one is actually a very <laughs> simple recipe. Like we did this wow. on the Chronicles, like Bart was saying, but it's literally a crappie fillet, just cut down super thin, and then they're just seared on the outside with just a little salt, and then it's uh, mayo, sriracha, little that Everglades seasoning, and then I just use a, a creme brulee torch to caramelize all the mayo on the outside and. Pretty bang. <laughs> do, do the you, fact that he used all these fancy words. Yeah. Th- that's, yeah, they're yeah. good. See, that, yeah. that's, how, that's, that's the that's difference. Like, if you want it to taste good, you just got to use all the big words. <laughs> Done deal. Every time. And then you just say, yeah, it's lit. Yeah. yeah. I didn't go to yeah. culinary school, but I Googled them up. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. You, you better let Waldo that? eat one because I know. he's starting to eat the, the tablecloth table cloth over there. All right. Here all you right. go. Uh, you Drew. can't you can't taste them if you're listening or watching. I know you can't smell them, but Amazing. unreal, dude. What do you do for a full time job again? So I, I used to uh, quit and cook. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're stealing my thunder here on what I'm going to yeah. say. No matter what he tells me, I'm what they call a water resources technician. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you need yeah. to be you need to be a chef, <laughs> man. But then we wouldn't get all the great stories about what's happening in the city of Chanhassen. That is true. The uh-huh. There is that. There is that. The text thread is popping off it's right so now. Great. Oh yeah. Oh my god. That is good. You got mad skill, man. Thank you. Yeah, I've had. I've had. Uh, what did we have the one time on the, on the ice? It was a street crop used crappies, I believe. Yep. We did the street tacos. You made your own pico de gallo or your fixings forward. You cut up all your own yeah, stuff. They were a, it was a blackened fish taco oh, is what we did. Yeah. It was so And I good. think the taco was actually cheese, cheese. wasn't it? Yeah, it was a, a fried cheese you taco did. shell instead of a tortilla. That's right, because I was on keto. Yep. Yeah. and Because yeah. you, you were asking, what are some things you guys want? Any diet restrictions? I said, no, yeah. I'm good. And, and I said, well, I'm doing kind of keto. And you're like, oh, perfect. I know what I can make you. Yeah, and it was literally like I was on my way there. Mm-hmm. And, and Bart texted me that, like, hey, if you could do like something that's like keto or whatever, that would be awesome. And I was like, 
sick. <laughs> like <laughs> literally <laughs> driving to the lake. Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, okay. Cause I was going to do tacos anyway. And then that was like, I guess in my mind, like an easy change up. I was like, let's just yeah. do that. So I just swung in and grabbed some. So some Tom, cheese. who works at Clam <laughs> on the marketing team, references that day and those tacos. Like, I don't know if him having a kid someday will top that memory. <laughs> <laughs> like, he still talks about it that. Like, every time your name gets, remember them tacos? I'm like, oh, I'm I surprised remember. Tom didn't stay today knowing yeah. that he was going to So come. I saw Tom was here all day. I'll give you. <laughs> Tom is like one of the busiest guys right now because we're in the middle of show season. Yeah. And I told him he knew you were coming. That's the move right there. And he was like, uh, you know, because he leaves at 3 o'clock. He's here at like 5 in the morning. And I'm like, well, we're going to be shooting with the Crappie Chronicles tonight. He's like, oh, maybe I'll come back. And I'm like, well, Pinkala's <laughs> cooking. And he goes, like, it's like, like he couldn't speak for like two seconds. <laughs> and then he's like, no, I got to yeah. go home. I have plans. And then he kind of stutters and he's like, no, I got I to gotta go home. I got to go. I got to go home. So like. Drew should be like texting Tom right yeah, now. Sorry, how, bro. How good you're missing out. <laughs> Better than the tacos. Tom, Tom, we we love you. We yeah. will bring you something else in the future. Maybe we'll bring yeah. him something to St. Paul. We'll make you cook it in the hotel room yeah. since we can't cook yeah, it. Yeah, we'll in the do that. Show. We'll just cover up the smoke alarm and just let yeah. it rip. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he'd, he'd appreciate that because that dude right now is working his well, a, a lot of our whole team is, right? But Tom has to this time of year it's it's a busy stretch for him. Oh, yeah. 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 You know. No, Tom, Tom crushes it yeah so. no that's all. like i love cooking for people that and like appreciate or enjoy it you know yeah, no get that back over here because it's man. like it's I'm, sick I'm to like cook that food and just like eat it yourself and you're like yeah that was pretty I, good I but <laughs> lick the end first trust me trust me <laughs> trust me trust me he says that about everything so <laughs> uh. um no yeah pink is it's a treat it's probably it's so the best thing Thank what's you. I Dude, think I my favorite you. thing he has cooked for us, if you, any of you have seen all the episodes, my favorite to this day, I will forever say, and he hates that I say it every time, <laughs> is the corn dogs. They were unbelievable, and yeah. they were so good. And neither of these guys got to have them because we had to do it after a filming like, night. So Elaborate on the corn dog. So it was a, a crappie corn dog. A, yeah, it was a crappie corn oh, dog. Yeah, I so remember. so I, I made that. like yeah. a, a fish sausage that we made into corn dogs, which were awesome. And like that's kind of the thing with the Chronicles that's been cool is, you know, it's given me an opportunity to like all the stuff we do is like original recipes, right? Like we're not just like going on the Internet and like, oh, somebody did this. Let's just do that. It sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of time and, that I put into like creating these coming up with this stuff like i text bart pictures all the time like from my kitchen like yo check this out what do you think and i mean every i mean it's the same i don't know why i do it because he's just like it looks sick every you know <laughs> bart said it looks sick yeah so i'm like it was good enough yeah. <laughs> you know but yeah so it's like that that part of it's been super cool being able to like create some of this stuff yeah. and and try to show people new things you know right because like that article i wrote you guys read that but it oh, was yeah. you know it was kind, kind of a, alluding to that that it's like hey like there's a lot of other stuff we can be doing here yeah like let's do well that. it's not just fi it's not just fish like i i follow you on social media and, and i like to cook I, I don't have i don't have this type of skill set anywhere in my body i can smoke meat in a trigger right and yeah pe people like to to comment and like but dude i'm pushing buttons let's be honest right you're creating stuff you know and it's not just fish like i've seen you do yeah. all kinds of wild game i've seen you do duck i've seen you just this elaborate stuff um elk welling are, are are you like are you like uh, <laughs> yeah, are, are you married you're not married no no girlfriend nothing nothing he <laughs> is uh, the greatest lady. bachelor <laughs> like, on the market ladies like yeah if you, you got a dude the here St. that Paul can cook show, better than please. any like chef i know oh right yeah 100 percent. <laughs> ladies yeah. coming to the st paul yeah. show please come hit ryan yeah, swing by the clam booth uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh, this seems like a no-brainer to me i mean it's there, someone's missing the boat. The so. hardest we decision will set up I'm a speed dating table. <laughs> yeah, we can set up a speed dating table at our meetup. Speaking of our meetup on Sunday yeah. at St. Paul, oh, eleven. Here we go. We will we will set up a speed dating table for Ryan yeah. if that many women show up. So well, please what show prizes up. are you giving away? They're getting a free we, hat if they come to the speed dating table. You may have a, you may have a, a, a potential prize. That's Bart. Bart set it up. I don't know a free hat. <laughs> Oh, no, we're giving away. We got 100 free hats for the first 100 people there. We've got a half-day guide trip with Griff. Um, I know we got a couple $100 Thorn gift cards. Uh, I can't even list everything. We got Clam Pro Tackle, mm -hmm. Vexlar, Relevant. 
you name it, we got a ton of stuff we're giving away. So come show up on Sunday. Um, we're even going to try to figure out how to get the Vikings game on. So you come watch <laughs> we'll my, figure it out. me either rejoice and be happy watching the Vikings, or you can watch me just collapse. I think I'm more nervous for that. Yeah. It can't be any worse than Sunday. That was... No. It, it literally, it can't. Throw out the game won't. tape. Throw out the game tape. <laughs> yeah. I need to worry about the Wisconsin Gophers game. And did weekend. you guys have a new logo? Yeah. Yeah. We do. It's awesome. Chris I mean, got it on right I now. I saw it a little bit ago, and, Ooh, and I'm seeing clean. it now. That is Sick, a good-looking right? logo. Yeah, no, we kind of had to change it up a little bit with the way the series is changing this yeah. year. We couldn't uh, couldn't have all the roads and everything everywhere. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, chasing crappies in Jamaica? Yes. Near, yeah. Near to beach. Yep. We're near hoping it freezes early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys. Uh, that Seriously, Ryan, you have a talent, man. And Thank I don't you. want to beat a dead horse, but, you know, keep coming up with good recipes. And we did allude earlier in the conversation. There is a segment in the digital magazine called The Frozen Kitchen that you're doing now. Yes. Um, so check that out. Uh, Anna he's got great recipes. <laughs> so Anna ripped it out. Yeah. yeah. See, I mean, look yeah. look at this. Like you got you got wives um salivating over Ryan in his food. Um so he he's doing good things. So uh, I'm excited to see more stuff cuz everything I see you cook it just looks amazing. And if you guys want to see a cookbook, keep bugging him cuz we're getting close. <laughs> yeah, we're, <laughs> get, we're getting there. <laughs> right. we'll, we'll say it here. This is the first place we've ever talked about it, but there it's in the works. Well, you got to you got to say in, it into the mic. It's in the works right now. So we haven't. This is the first place we've talked about this. Yep. There is a Crappie Chronicles cookbook. Gears are turning right now. Ooh, I'll buy one. So yeah, we T- know Anna will buy one. Oh, yeah. TBD Anna on the release date. One. Yeah, but it's coming. Sweet, so, sweet. I'm gonna try to get Ryan at some point to to do some uh, some more cooking videos. We'll figure it out. I'll make it yeah. worth your time. I think people like to see that stuff. Um, the fishing aspect of everything we do obviously is primo, right? That's what, what we all live for. But I think I've learned, and I know for a fact in our industry and in our fan loves to see food. Oh yeah. Especially sure. food that they catch, they kill, right? Ever, whatever. Right. Um, I, I've seen, I, I, my wife jokes that some weeks I get more attention on a smoked chunk of meat than I do on a big old five and a half pound largemouth I post a picture of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a cool dynamic to the Crappie Chronicles. I'm glad you added it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got to meet Ryan. You're, you're a heck of a cool dude on top of all the fishing and cooking, uh, much like all four of you. And it's, you know, I keep learning stuff. I mean, I've been guiding a long time, 22 years. And every time I talk with one of you, I learn some tidbit or something different that I had never thought of on how to approach a, a piece of structure, how to approach a lake, maybe how to not fish a certain lake because of certain situations, um, certain ways we do things. Um, and I think that comes listening to this conversation, open my eyes a little bit to understand the pure work. So I have to live vicariously, much like everyone listening and watching, right? Let's be honest. We live vicariously through a lot of people, right? You know, I'm working at Clam full time. I'm, I'm not guiding as much as I did. I'm not chasing some of these cool hot bites, but you guys get to do it. And I think a lot of these viewers gravitate towards what you're doing, gravitate towards the Sam Sobe, right? Because they live vicariously through your guys' efforts. So, but one thing I'm trying to let the, this audience know is the effort that you put in, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's almost untouched. And and I think that's something people need to realize. And I think that goes with all aspects of, of fishing and promoting, right? And I tell this to young pros that want to get involved in the industry. <laughs> and you probably have told this to people that come up to you at shows. Like, how do you do this? I want to do this. And you're probably thinking, you know, I don't want to discourage anybody from wanting to do this. But newsflash, this is hard. Right, it doesn't happen overnight. Right, yeah. it, it's a grind, and even you've heard in this conversation that all four of these guys go out for days, and and it may not pan out. Mm-hmm. But I think one thing we always reiterate, and Gens talked about this too, we don't just go out and catch. We don't just go out there and catch big fish all the time, right? It's just not how the world works. You fail until it happens. Absolutely, and and I think what you guys are is a testament to the epicenter of ice fishing in the world is here in the Twin Cities. Central Minnesota is like the most populated mount of ice fishermen, period. It's a hub and spoke. And you're showing that in the most popular part of ice fishing, you can go out there with effort and maybe a little bit of savviness and find possibly the biggest fish of your life. Yeah. And, and I think that's something that is honestly underappreciated before what you guys do. And I think your formula is phenomenal. I think it's great. I, I think it's, it's cool. It's, hum, it's humbling. 
you know, and, and I think you, you nailed it. You said there's people that follow us and I know you guys got followed on the ice. And what I think is, is, is so cool. And I think part of the reason you guys grin when some of that happens, cause you guys know, like, it's not that easy. You know, yeah. it's not that easy just because yeah. they see where you're at and maybe even see some of the things you're doing. It's not that easy. And I'm a firm believer in a, in a statement that a lot of people know maybe the right lake or the right spot, but they might not know how to fish that spot the right way. Yeah. yeah. And I think you guys have proved that. Well, in a prime example to that, and I think <laughs> Griff and I will kind of always have this experience. I know Ryan and Waldo were at work this day, but the day Griff caught that, I mean, whatever, three and a half, what, whatever it was, pounder that we put on freak camera. Yeah, yeah, that freak show we put on camera last year. What Brock. people, Brock you know, Lesnar. Yeah, Brock yeah. Lesnar. The Brock I, I, was like, I was like, Brock Schwarzkopf wasn't no, there. No. I was, that's not what I was getting to. Um, no, we had uh, we actually had a couple fans that were on that body of water when we got there. So, like, Griff and I got there. They noticed us. We chatted with them a little bit. They let us kind of work around wherever we wanted, and we kind of just hung out with them. And uh, I was chatting with them, and Griff had caught a couple good ones, and I just kind of looked at him, and I was like, don't go within 50 feet of him. And they were like, what do you mean? I'm like, because he's catching big ones, he's going to get mad because something's about to happen. And then literally, like, two minutes later, you hear, you know, the infamous words of, you know, we got her, Bart. And he just looks at me and holds it up, and I'm like, "Oh my god, that's a hubcap!" Yeah. Like yeah. I thought he just pulled a tire out of the ice. And there and there were four kids, and they were all kids. There was four kids there that literally got to experience that whole thing. They watched us film it, photograph it, put it back, and they all looked at us and went, "We're not saying a word." Right. <laughs> and like, and they cool. haven't. Nobody's yeah. ever been all there. All three of you looked at him and just gave him the glare. I, was that the fish? Because there was a time you caught a big crappie, and this might have been it. I can't remember. You told me that you were like, wait till you see what Griff caught. And I think you said something like, when Griff says nothing, he's like, he had nothing to say. You know how big the fish was because he had, Griff was speechless. Yeah. And he's like, I'm talking about Griff. He was speechless. Wait till you see how big this fish was. Was that the one? Yeah. When yeah, you were yeah. like, he was no. actually speechless. Yeah, it was the first. A crappie like, made Adam Griffith speechless. Yeah, we've I'm caught. Like, how I, big is this thing? And he's like, first, you were like, just wait. Words, but yeah, and then <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know yeah. what to say about this thing. There were a handful of bleeps in that episode. <laughs> yeah. Just, we had to use the sensor button a few times. But, yeah, I mean, that so was. That's raw motion, man. That's what it should be. Yeah, and that's what the way we try to keep it. And I think we all take a lot of pride in it is we keep it raw. And like you said, it's not, you know, it's uncut. Like, we don't. We don't script anything. I mean, some of the intros and stuff of us talking, yeah, we do. But, yeah. like, we don't script any of the fishing or any of that stuff. We just go out, throw on some GoPros, and whatever happens, happens. Like, yeah, you guys you can't see write what that we're doing. Stuff. No. No. It's just a lot of time and I think on the a water. lot of people experience that, right? Like, no matter your ice fishing, open water angling, whatever, that it's like you get out there, and there's crazy stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. It's just we've been fortunate to catch a lot of that on camera, and – I think a lot of people can relate to that because maybe you're not doing the same thing like chasing, you know, trophy, whatever, you know, species it is. But there's always these things, weird catches, stuff that happens that, like, you tell your buddies about and they're all like, that is a crazy story. But when you get it on video, it's like a totally different deal. Like, I feel like it just, you feel like you succeeded in some way, whether it's oh, yeah. like that we, you know, got a, a mega giant or not. It's on a it's an adrenaline. It's like, a legit. To be honest, that one clip where we caught those three bigs back to back to back. That makes me freak out. I mean, every they time. weren't 18s, but I mean, they were all like 15s, which is 15 crazy. and a half. But, yeah. but it was like that moment would have been sick either way. If we oh, were just of course. Been, like, doing yeah. it ourselves and we'd still been talking about it. But the fact that we have that clip is unreal. Yeah. And to like bring <laughs> it back full circle, Matt, like you want to talk about what makes me tick? It was that five minutes, that mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah. Like that feeling right there, the feeling when I looked at Griff and all of a sudden my hands wouldn't stop shaking and my knees were buckling as I was walking over to film it, that's why I do it. Yeah. And like you only get to feel that a couple times a winter and that's why we chase that is like yeah. it is, I don't know, it's just unbeatable. And to, we're so appreciative. We say it all the time to all the fans and everything and we run into them on the water a lot and kind of what we tell everyone is, you know, We've, I feel like we've opened kind of, we've opened Pandora's box in terms of the Twin Cities. A lot of people knows what's there now, and we just say, hey, like, the only way uh, ice fishing media and the ice fishing world will get better is if you keep educating and showing people, and we just got to trust them 
that they will listen to us when we say, hey, catch and release. Yeah. Like, if you see someone get a get one over 12, put it back. Like, dude, it is so easy to go harvest 10, 10 9 to 10-inch crappies in the Twin right. Cities metro area. Just go do that. Yeah. Guess what? You're going to grow more big ones because of it. Amen. Well, I know we've been talking for almost 90 minutes. So we're going to want to wrap this up at some point because I think we all want to go to bed tonight at, at some point. But I wanted to touch on one thing before we do close up. Um, so we talked about everything you guys are doing. I know you guys got a busy schedule, I'm sure, this winter. I know you're going to be at shows. But one thing I really love what you've incorporated into the Chronicles that I, I don't think you've mentioned at all, and maybe I need to, is you're doing more than just fishing. You guys are partnering with organizations like FAM. Um, you're taking kids fishing. You've you've done uh, media stuff with um, um, different uh, uh, influence stars, right? So I think what the Chronicles has even evolved into is is not just four dudes trying to catch these big crappies, but you alluded to it just a minute ago, Bart, on your ability to give back and educate and make sure people are on the same page. And I think I love what I what you guys are doing. Um, like I said, there's a bunch of kids out there that ad- admire the four of you. Like I don't think you even know yet, right? And sometimes we take it for granted, and I don't think you guys do, but I love what you're doing with fam. I love that you're doing meet and greets. I love that you take time to talk to all these kids. Um, so I think that's also something that should be admired. Like there's so many good anglers out there and good um, ambassadors for the sport. But I think there's other things we can all be doing, like helping our youth, making sure the sport continues, talking about selective harvest, like I know all you guys are doing, preaching about that kind of stuff. you know. And, and I think I, you need to be commended on that too. So I know um, this winter you guys are going to be super busy. Um, I know these guys are approachable. Give them some respect, though, if they're on the ice doing their thing and they're filming, right? I think that's fa- that's fair to say. So if you do happen to roll up on, on some of these guys fishing and, and they're filming, uh, they'd probably love to say hi, but just kind of test the waters and make sure you guys aren't on a bite right now. You're not midstream, um, but uh, I think that's important. But kudos to you guys for everything you're doing in the industry right now, man. It's been fun to watch the Crappie Chronicles. It's been fun to hear some of the stories. I didn't know all of it. Um, it's been fun to watch you guys grow as anglers and honestly grow as people. And I think that's as, as much important as the fishing side is just the integrity side. You guys hold yourself with such high regard. There's no ego here. There's no. none. We give Bart a hard, hard time, but Bart's got, <laughs> Adam's got no ego. He just likes to talk a lot, right? Yeah. Yes, um, Speaking of that, I had one thing I wanted to announce if I can go there. <laughs> go go, oh, a, go well, ahead. You're, and <laughs> you're talking about future anglers in Minnesota <laughs> and giving back to the youth, so I figured we might as well announce it now. So you're going to have to stay tuned for the official registration date, but we'll just put it on people's ears who are listening to the Ice Team podcast. Um, we're going to be having a come fish with us today with future anglers in Minnesota this winter on January 28th. Um, more details will be coming out. It's going to be down in the Faribault area. It's only going to be open to 45 kids. Um, you can bring a parent or two if you want, but that's like it. Um, so it's going to be open to 45 kids. If you want to come out, we'll have sponsor stuff there. We'll be hanging out. We'll be fishing with everybody all afternoon. So that will be happening. And uh, if you want to support future anglers in Minnesota, like, Please go do that. Mm-hmm. It's how we all got started was being fishermen as kids, and hopefully we'll get to hang out with a bunch of you guys out on the ice this year. I love it. That's awesome. So you guys are giving back. Um, can't can't appreciate it enough. Ryan, those crappie thing. Um, I don't know how there's a couple left. You can't see them, but they're I, about to get crushed. Yeah, save them. You know, uh, Here, Drew, yeah, you can have them. Drew and Luke, come take Yeah, you guys finish them yeah, off. Everyone's kind of, I think, being you know respectful. Um but this has been awesome. Like I said, when we launched this podcast, right away I said, I, I think I might have hit Bart up. We didn't have even film one yet, and I had you on the docket. Mm-hmm. We talked, and I, we, we figured out a date. I know these guys are busy. We got you out here. Thank you so much. It's, it is, what time is it right now? It's 720, 720. On, a, on a weeknight. It's a school night for these boys. Um, it's 720 on a weeknight, and here we are still filming a podcast. So labor of love, guys. Can't thank you enough. So, you know, any parting words? I just want to say something like, um, like thank you to the people that watch us. Keep sending in like your pictures of like recreating Pink's recipes, um, fish that you catch. We really appreciate that. It's just something cool to. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's awesome to see Absolutely. people. Oh, yeah. Send in their PB crappie. Send in their. Especially like of, doing of stuff Pink's we've corn done. Dogs that they did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of those pictures were absolutely yeah. hilarious. Yeah. 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 It, especially like doing stuff like techniques and stuff that we've talked about on the show. It's it's really cool seeing kids yeah. send you a picture of a 
giant crappie they caught and it's we've seen a couple that have been bigger than we've caught on oh, camera and you're yeah. Yeah, yeah and you're just pumped for that kid because yeah. that's that's a huge moment in their life catching a giant crappie like that yeah. so i love it you remember it forever yeah, yeah. no i we got some tricks up our sleeve this year and uh i think everyone's gonna be pretty pumped we're, we're gonna go down swinging so uh I think I think everyone's going to enjoy this year. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're gonna we're gonna shake it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then uh, again, come see all four of these guys at the St. Paul Ice Show. They'll be there rocking and rolling, and then follow them on all their social media channels. Um, you're not going to want to miss any of this stuff, and you're definitely not going to want to miss what Ryan cooks. I can tell you for sure, all kinds of good stuff. So here we are with the Ice Team Podcast. We got the Crappie Chronicles, all four of them in the house. It's been awesome. Uh, We could have talked all night, uh, but we're going to cut it out here at 90 minutes, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in.